Hey, what is up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros. And today we're gonna to be doing a more expensive than normal $1,100 Overwatch themed gaming PC. Let's get right into it, shall we? This video is brought to you by GVG Mall, an online marketplace to get access to some game keys and licenses for your favorite applications, and more specifically, Windows 10 keys. Which this PC here, once you guys actually see it built, we're gonna need to put Windows 10 Pro on it. GVG Mall just so happens to have the Windows 10 Pro activation keys on there. Activating your Windows license is very simple. Buy your key through GVG Mall, get it emailed to you, and then throw your Windows key into the Windows PC of your choice, and boom, you're activated and ready to go. And don't forget to use code TB20 at checkout for 20 additional percent off, and then let's get back into this video. All right, guys, so once again, NZXT just came in clutch, and we got this H500 that's matte black, so big thanks to NZXT. Looks awesome, really good case. We built in it a couple times now. Here at the Toaster Rose, we like to do stuff the cheap way. So we have a vinyl cutout of the Overwatch logo that's gonna slap right on the front there, just like the actual case, but it won't glow, you know, no big deal. And then also we decided to be not Toaster Rose and go really expensive with individually sleeved Thermaltake orange and black cables. They're gonna look really nice. Here's actually the cable. I wouldn't even show you guys that, but yeah, they're gonna look really cool. And I think they even have ones for the fans in here. So everything's gonna be orange and black sleeved and it's gonna look great. So Matt and I have not yet gotten a chance to use this. This is the AMD Ryzen 2700. Very exciting. Eight core, 16 thread processor, basically like an 1800, but you know, it's second gen. So this thing is going to be an absolute monster. And for the graphics card, we have actually gotten to use this. This is a GeForce RTX 2060. Really good graphics card from Gigabyte. So this is an entry level card that allows you to do raid tracing. It's kind of like an entry level card because you have the 2070 and the 2080, which are a lot more expensive than this one. So for the motherboard, we have the ROG Strix B450F Gaming. This thing is gonna look really cool. We have all kinds of RGB on the motherboard that's fully customizable. And more than likely, once you guys see the fans that we're gonna be using, we're gonna have this build nice and orange LED lit. And of course, since everything else is RGB, we had to go with the RGB RAM. This is 3000 megahertz, two eight gig sticks, so 16 gigs of RGB Vengeance RAM from Corsair. Now for storage, we went with the WD Blue Solid State M.2 SSD. 500 gigabytes is more than enough for a boot drive, and we will be throwing in a hard drive later when we do give this build to its rightful owner. Western Digital Blue Drives are pretty fast and M.2, so you can't go wrong. And to power this build, we have the Corsair CX550M, a 550 watt, 80 plus bronze power supply. It comes with some all black cables, which really doesn't matter, because as Jackson mentioned, we're gonna be using some orange sleeve cables, but it's from Corsair, a reliable company, and 80 plus bronze, so it'll be good to go. And lastly, for some RGB magic, we're gonna be using these Deepcool RF120 millimeter RGB fans. Deepcool is nice enough to send these out. We're gonna be decking this case out with a lot of RGB, making it look real nice, and as Jackson mentioned, we're gonna be making it orange to match this Overwatch theme. So how about we just go right ahead and start building this thing?
right, guys, so the first game we're going to be testing is actually Fortnite. We've heard you all complain enough about us not testing Fortnite, so we decided to swap it from our normal benchmark game of Apex Legends and test Fortnite on the pro settings using Epic View Distance and everything else off. All right, so right now in the dropship, we're getting around close. We're just all over the place. We have the frame rate cap turned off, so there is no frame rate cap. Um, right now, dropping in, we're getting about 80 to 100-ish FPS. It's really all over the place. Keep in mind, we are running the 2700 at stock speeds right now. The person we're giving this PC to really won't tinker with overclocking, and if he does, he might actually end up getting a different cooler for it. Um, but the stock cooler that comes with the Ryzen 7 2700 is actually decent enough to get some slight overclocks on it. Um, but right now, as we're dropping in, we're at around 170 FPS. Um, one thing that it would probably make the most sense for this is to consider locking the frame rate at something like 144 if you are using a high refresh rate panel or something like that. But going around right now, uh, mining away, because this is obviously Minecraft, we're at like 200 FPS. Again, it's all over the place, but it really hasn't dipped that far below the uh, 100 FPS mark throughout the whole benchmark run. Now let's see if we can find somebody. Okay, come here. Oh! Missed everything, fog. I don't know, this guy just like ninja vanish. No! How much HP did he have? He had like no HP. Oh, someone else came in. He literally had 18, nice. So yeah, Fortnite, more than playable on pro settings. All right, so of course with an Overwatch theme build, we had to test, well, Overwatch. And right now we're running on ultra settings, 1080p with an unlocked frame cap. And right now in the waiting area, we have about 140-ish FPS. Um, is This game's relatively easy to run. I wasn't expecting this to be a challenging benchmark, but since it is an Overwatch theme build, we had to show what it can do in Overwatch areas it seems to still hover around 150 not even close to dipping below 100 fps which is more than fine for a 60 hertz monitor this pc might actually still be good for a high refresh rate display also if they, if someone ends up using it in that way Ooh, i got a kill dude that's all i care about Ooh, there we go there we go but uh, yeah as you can tell guys really no performance issues at all with overwatch no issues until i possibly die here i don't know maybe oh got another kill dude i'm just popping off dude overwatch is definitely playable on to the next game all right guys the next game we're going to be testing is far cry 5 with their built-in benchmark utility on max settings we're going to see how well this thing performs this is a good example of just modern uh triple a titles what kind of performance you'll get from them far cry 5 is still a demanding game even though there is a newer version out this benchmark utility is still really good to see overall performance of the system in modern triple a titles and right now running through the beginning of this benchmark we're at around an average of 82 83 fps this benchmark starts off very slow and then kind of gradually gets into more demanding things but right now we're at 75 haven't even got to 60 yet which is actually very impressive for this game uh running through the benchmark but overall i think the system is performing very well um going through the benchmark run 72 fps the average is still 79 this is really good numbers for 1080p on a game like this maxed out you can always lower the settings to get better results the max frame rate looks like it's going to end up being 98 with the average of 78 and a minimum of 62, which I definitely consider playable. So let's go test one more game real quick. All right, guys. So the last game we're going to be testing is Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Right now on ultra settings, we are getting in the dropship around 150 FPS, which is pretty crazy for PUBG. This game has come a long way from its optimization uh, in the way it used to run on hardware like AMD systems. It used to be really Intel based, but Nonetheless, dropping in right now, we're getting about 170 FPS. We'll see what kind of frame we get actually after we land. Um, but it's showing pretty uniform usage across the board. There is a little bit of spike here in GPU usage showing that there is a slight bottleneck with the Ryzen processor, but that could be fixed if there was some overclocking done to the processor. Again, it's running at stock speeds, which are a little bit lower than what you'd really want for a gaming CPU. But again, this is a pretty high-end system overall. Overclocking would make things a little bit better, but it's nothing to complain about. Now dropping in, we are at 97, 104, all over the place really, with an un uh, uncapped uh, frame limiter. Uh, running around 90, 94, again, nothing to complain about. Let's see if we can go in and get somebody. Oh, oh there's one right here. Ah! No! Got him, dude. Got a micro Uzi kill, dude. Oh, God. I had shot somewhere else. 
dang it, I got a kill, that's all that I care about. But overall performance on this system is an A+. You're spending money on it, you're getting good performance. RTX 2060, Ryzen 7 2700 is a pretty damn good combo. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up real quick. So this build actually turned out really good. I'm kind of glad that we actually didn't get the NZXT Overwatch theme case and so we made our own. You know, we saved a decent amount of money doing that. The vinyl was only like five bucks. So a really cheap and easy way to do an Overwatch theme PC kind of on your own. The sleeve cables are a little more expensive. The sleeve cables are like $50, so it's kind of an optional choice. But you know, some RGB fans for cheap and then you're good to go. I was very impressed with the performance of this system. The Ryzen 7 and RTX 2060 is a really good combo for people who want to get into live streaming and just gaming on a somewhat affordable budget, you're getting a lot of performance for your dollar. So if you spend a thousand bucks, you're definitely getting your money's worth of this system. And not to mention that raid tracing is actually doable with this. And honestly, this build's gonna be pretty future-proof. It's gonna last quite a while and it has a good upgrade path for once like third gen stuff comes out. So I think we'll be good for a while. So we hope you guys enjoyed this PC build. If you do wanna part together the system yourself, links will be in the description down below. As always, like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you all in the next one. Peace.